You're watching Channel Japan. In our next segment, we will introduce some of our popular documentary programs. This week's episode is about a university launched venture company. It looks like an ordinary thread. However, it's stronger than iron and stretches like elastic. It's also petroleum free, making it a dream environmental fiber. It's artificial spider silk. How is this material, which not even NASA could successfully develop, created? I have a dream. Kazuhide Sekiyama is the person taking on the difficult challenge of designing his artificial spider silk for practical implementation. <laughs> he has 93 employees at his company, averaging 32 years old. In theory, if the thread of an ordinary spider's web had a diameter of one centimeter and was stretched 500 meters in every direction, it would be powerful enough to stop the takeoff of a jumbo jet. Our cameras were allowed access into the factory where this incredibly strong artificial spider silk is made. But due to in-house confidentiality, we were allowed to film in just one area. We could only shoot how the finished silk is wound onto these rollers. Just how strong is it? By tugging with all one's might, it's certainly tough. What if it were just a single thread? Let's compare it to different fibers of the same diameter. A cup is hung from the threads and weights dropped into it to see how much it can bear. The experiment begins. The carbon fiber looks to be the favorite. It barely gives. But then it snaps straight through. Then the polyester thread breaks, leaving the artificial spider silk the winner. Next, the silk is stretched vertically. It stretches and stretches upwards. Even though it was stretched to double its length, it never snapped. This extremely strong artificial spider silk is a dream material. But what exactly is it made from? As spiders are cannibalistic, they aren't suitable for breeding. But in this room, Sekiyama cultivates an animal that is producing materials used in the artificial silk. The silk that spiders produce is made from protein, the same substance as human hair and skin is made from. Sekiyama developed a technology in which microorganisms create the protein to become spider silk. Only the protein is extracted to become the material to make the artificial spider silk. This protein is dissolved into a special liquid, then strained through a tiny hole, turning into thread. 
This is the resulting artificial spider silk made of 100% protein. It's environmentally friendly as it doesn't use petroleum. Research has already begun in a number of fields using this brand new fiber. This is an artificial blood vessel threaded with the artificial spider silk. As it's made of protein, it is thought to have little impact on the body, making it an eagerly awaited application. This isn't thread but film. The artificial spider silk can take a variety of forms. Its strength and flexibility, as well as environmental merits, will lead to revolutionary changes in manufacturing. This dream has already begun to be realized in summer 2015. He's teamed up with an apparel maker to develop the world's first product to use the artificial spider silk. Currently, almost all clothing items are petroleum derived. On this day, they check fabric samples that are being developed using the artificial spider silk. The fabric has a sheen unique to the fiber and the black thread used in the emblem is also the artificial spider silk. It's the world's first step towards non-petroleum-based manufacturing. The idea was planted when Sekiyama was drinking with fellow senior university students at a study camp in summer. And the topic of spiders came up. Spider silk is really strong. It'd be virtually impossible to artificially make it, though. At that time, it was just casual talk over drinks. But early next day, Sekiyama took a friend to a forest. He then captured 100 spiders. Let's make our own spider silk. He presented his idea to his professors. As for their reaction, it's completely impossible. You'll never graduate if you do such a thing. The professors were far from impressed with Sekiyama's attitude. But one professor smiled amidst the disapproval. Why not? It sounds interesting. Let him do it. Professor Tomita was impressed with Sekiyama's tenacity in collecting all those spiders. With the backing of the professor, he began his research. He would require a huge production volume for practical application. He then found that microbes were cheaply available and could breed quickly in a very short time. A particular DNA is responsible for the protein used in creating spider silk. By extracting, then implanting that DNA into the microbes, they could generate protein too. In the past, other researchers had tried using spider DNA to create protein, but it had failed to function. 
Seki Yama thought that if he refined the DNA so that the microbes could activate it once implanted, he could make protein. After three years of research, he discovered a thin object just a millimeter in length under his microscope. Within that year, that one millimeter thread led him to establish a company with the real aim of a full scale mass production. The following year, the thread had grown to two centimeters, then long enough to be wound the next. Large-scale production of the artificial spider silk had been becoming a reality. もう本当にすごいアイデアでそれだけでなんかものすごいイノベーションが起こるみたいなことはありえないと思っているので、それを実際に現実にするためになんていうかあのやらなきゃいけないこととかその実際に行動してえ形にしていくみたいなところっていう
Professor Tomita watched the footage of his former student achieving his dreams. いや、かっこいいですね。うん。地名感でやってるってね。さすがだなと思いますね。うん。もう本当に雲を掴むような話がどんどん現実のものになっていくのを見て本当すごいなと思います。ホラーにしか聞こえないようなとんでもない目標を